This is Detective Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a romantic thriller film called Rebecca. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Set in a luxurious hotel in the 1940s, a young woman working for the prestigious Mrs. Van Hopper meets the acquaintance of Maxime de Winter, a newly widowed man with a mysterious air about him. From early on, they've taken a liking to each other, despite the woman's lower economic class. Mrs. Van Hopper doesn't believe that the young woman has a chance with a de Winter since she sees her as a lowly lady's companion. Unbeknownst to the judgmental Van Hopper, she and Maxime are already undergoing a courtship. Maxime frequently leaves her with notes, saying where to go on their next date while using the hotel's front parking lot as the usual rendezvous place. They go to all sorts of romantic places for their dates, which are only soured when the young woman mentions Maxime's late wife, Rebecca. Apart from that touchy subject, the relationship is a passionate one. However, Mrs. Van Hopper catches on and discovers her affair with De Winter. Suddenly, Mrs. Van Hopper is eager to leave Europe altogether, perhaps out of spite since the young woman hid the affair from her. The young woman is moments away from leaving the hotel and never seeing Maxime ever again. She goes up to his hotel room in an attempt to say goodbye to him one last time. Suddenly, Maxime proposes to her then and there. The young woman agrees, and together, she and Maxime talk to Mrs. Van Hopper about their intention to marry. Maxime leaves for a moment to retrieve the young woman's things, leaving the two women alone. Mrs. Van Hopper leaves her former servant a warning about men, and she insults her one last time saying Maxime only wants her because he's trying to get over his dead wife. Maxime is the heir to the great house of Manderley in southern England. After their honeymoon, the young woman comes home to Manderley as the new Mrs. de Winter. However, the entire staff of the large Manderley estate looks at her with a judging eye. The expansive manse is run by the housekeeper, Mrs. Danvers. She greets Mrs. de Winter coldly because she was fond of Rebecca back when she was alive. Danvers isn't the only one who feels this way. Many of the other staff seem to look at her with an overly critical stare. What's more is that Maxime himself treats her coldly now and again, whenever she mentions Rebecca. However, Mrs. De Winter can't help herself because she just wants to learn more about her husband. Over time, Mrs. De Winter grows more bothered by the unnerving presence of Rebecca. She feels a multitude of confounding emotions as she frequently sees her letter R embroidered or engraved into the objects of the house. It becomes even more bothersome when she realizes that she's been using Rebecca's comb and some of her clothes. Mrs. De Winter develops a dark curiosity for Rebecca and she goes around the house, riffling through Rebecca's belongings. She finds out from Danvers that Rebecca used to hold grand parties at magnificent balls at the mansion. As the new lady of the house, Mrs. De Winters feels pressured to live up to everybody's expectations. The worst of it all is Danvers, who continuously taunts Mrs. De Winters as being inferior to Rebecca. The people around her aren't much of help with alleviating the pressure she feels. At one point, Maxime's sister, her husband, and Maxime's grandmother arrive at the Manderley estate for a visit. Tension rises when Mrs. De Winter mentions that she'd like to revive the ball. This strikes a chord in Maxime. The conversation becomes even more nerve-wracking when Maxime's elderly grandmother starts exclaiming that Mrs. De Winter isn't Maxime's wife as she calls out for Rebecca. And now furious Maxime hurries to get his grandmother to the car. Before leaving, Maxime's sister offers some words of sympathy to Mrs. De Winter, saying that Rebecca was just one of those annoying individuals who seemed to do everything perfectly and that ordinary people like them could never compare. During one afternoon stroll, Mr. and Mrs. De Winter come close to the beach. They got separated when Mrs. De Winter follows their dog Jasper to it. Maxime demands that she doesn't follow Jasper, but Mrs. De Winter is already too far away to hear him shouting. Mrs. De Winter follows Jasper into a small beach house situated at the top of a stone stairway. Inside, she finds that most of the furniture is covered in white sheets as if it's going to be closed down. She then finds Jasper staring at a rug that's hung afloat. 
Mrs. De Winter peeks through the rug after Jasper enters inside. From behind it is a cookie old man named Ben. He is surprised to see the missus, as he doesn't know who she is. Ben tells her that the dog used to belong to Rebecca, and that Rebecca died by drowning at the sea. Finally, Mrs. De Winter exits the beach house and finds Maxime waiting for her and looking very uncomfortable being there. She apologizes to him, but she emphasizes that Maxime hasn't explained anything to her, so she couldn't have known not to go there. She later returns to that beach house in hopes of learning more about Rebecca. She doesn't find much except for a chance encounter with Frank Crawley, the man who handles the legal aspect of the estate. Mrs. De Winter asks more about Rebecca, and from him, she learns more about the details of the late lady's death. She was sailing when a storm hit her, and it was two whole months before her body washed ashore. Mrs. De Winter feels that her death was horrific, and she takes that moment to ask Frank if Rebecca was beautiful. Frank replies that Rebecca was the most beautiful creature he's ever seen. During most of the evenings, Mrs. De Winter has vivid nightmares featuring Rebecca as a shrouded figure. Her nightmares are colored by her own anxiety of being the new lady of the house and the constant feeling of inferiority and rejection she receives from the people around her. Her nightmares are made worse by the strange fact that Maxime is apparently a sleepwalker. One afternoon, when Maxime is out of town in London, Mrs. De Winter meets the acquaintance of Jack Favell. Jack introduces himself as Rebecca's cousin, and he says that Danvers has invited him for tea. Believing him, Mrs. De Winter speaks with Jack until he runs off to the stables. Jack offers to teach Mrs. De Winter to ride a horse. Though the missus is hesitant at first, Jack is very insistent. Much to her surprise, Jack mounts the very same horse as her, so he's situated directly behind her. It's very apparent that Jack is making a move on her. Mrs. De Winter, however, is quite naive and doesn't catch on to Jack's shenanigans. Jack then starts asking if Maxime has talked about Rebecca, and she admits that he doesn't mention his late wife at all. Jack then reveals that Rebecca went to London during the day before she died in the night. He also mentions that Rebecca wanted to tell him something important and he regrets that she never got the chance to tell him. When Mrs. De Winter asks why Jack doesn't just ask Maxime, he replies that he's not on good terms with Maxime and he's banned from the grounds. Suddenly, Jack mentions Maxime's famous temper. Mrs. De Winter feels nervous about the implications of Jack's ominous statement, and with that, Jack leaves the Manderley grounds. Soon, Maxime finds out about Jack Favel's unauthorized visit. This sends him into a fit of rage, and he accuses Mrs. De Winter of cheating on him. She tries to explain that it was Miss Danvers who invited him to the house, but Maxime doesn't believe her. Finally, Mrs. De Winter goes up to Danvers' quarters and directly fires her from her job as she's had more than enough of her animosity at that point. However, Danvers suddenly starts admitting that she was at fault and explains that she had been Rebecca's companion ever since she was a child. She explains that she was wrong to have expected Mrs. De Winter to replace Rebecca. So now, Danvers promises that she'll help her. And from then on, the woman has stopped being hostile to the new lady of the house. With their newfound truce, Mrs. De Winters and Danvers work together to revive the Manderley costume ball. Everything is already set in place except for one thing. Mrs. De Winters hasn't decided on what to wear yet. This is when her maid, Clarice, gives her an idea. The Grand Family painting hosts a beautiful selection of old era fashion. Maxime had a particular favorite, a great aunt of his in a red dress. Danvers sees Mrs. De Winter looking at the painting and compliments her, saying that it would suit her well. The ball is now underway and preparations are almost done. Only the hostess, Mrs. De Winter, is still upstairs preparing her outfit. The ball is a booming success and Maxime's spirit has never been more cheerful. However, when Mrs. De Winter goes down to present herself to Maxime and the guests, Maxime screams in an outburst, demanding her to change her clothes immediately. She retreats to her room and begins crying. On her way there, she finds Clarice apologizing profusely and telling her that Danvers ordered her to suggest that outfit. 
She didn't know it would bring out such a reaction as she simply thought that the attire would please everyone. All of this turns out to be a ploy by Danvers to sour her relationship with Maxime. Maxime's sister goes up to Mrs. De Winter's room and convinces her not to feel sorry for herself and get changed. Mrs. De Winter wipes her tears and rejoins the party with a simpler outfit. However, Maxime is now in a bitter mood and whispers to her that he should have never brought her to Manderley. Feeling that Maxime doesn't want her anymore, Mrs. De Winter runs off to an empty part of the house. Mrs. Danvers follows her and she reveals to the distraught lady that she despises her, thinking that she's set to replace Rebecca. However, this is thwarted when a shipwreck is suddenly discovered near the beach. This ship was Rebecca's, and her decomposing corpse was found from within one of the cabins. This discovery reopens the investigation of her death, which has now become questionable because Maxime had already identified her body some time ago. Mrs. De Winter searches for her husband after the commotion, and she finds him in Ben's beach house, drinking and sulking by himself. Finally, Maxime reveals that he hated Rebecca. She was an immensely cruel woman who flaunted her promiscuity to Maxime just to hurt him. She even slept with her own cousin, Jack. Beyond her blatantly unfaithful ways, Rebecca was also manipulative and she had everyone convinced that she was a good person. That night that Rebecca died, the woman told Maxime that she was pregnant with another man's child, but she fully intended on raising the child as if it were his. Rebecca knew what she was doing. Maxime would never separate from her. It would bring his name too much shame. She then had Maxime wield a gun, placed it on her chest, and told him that the only way she'll be free of her is by killing her. Pushed to his limits, Maxime pulled the trigger. She didn't collapse at first. Rebecca just stood there, looking almost relieved. Then, he disposed of her body by placing it in the ship and sinking it. Maxime thinks that his new wife would be horrified to discover that he's a killer. But Mrs. De Winter is actually relieved that Maxime loves her after all. With that, she resolves to support Maxime in the upcoming investigation and legal proceedings. The first trial shows that the boat was deliberately sunk, and this doesn't bode well for Maxime. That evening, Jack Favel enters their home and blackmails them, asking for a large sum of money in exchange for the note that Rebecca sent him, which mentions that she wanted to tell him something important. Maxime begrudgingly complies with his demand. The very next day, Mrs. Danvers is called to testify in court. Though she maintains a measured and guarded manner of speaking, she admits to Rebecca's intimate relationship with her cousin. But her revelations don't stop there. She tells the court that Rebecca left a note for Jack, one that Maxime was very keen to keep hidden. Mrs. Danvers said that Maxime paid Jack 10,000 euros for his silence before mentioning that Rebecca made a trip to a doctor in London. Here, she reveals that Rebecca was pregnant and the lawyer representing Rebecca argues that she must have wanted to tell Jack in the note that she was pregnant with his baby, which indicates that she had no desire to kill herself. These testimonies turn the trial into a criminal investigation, and Maxime is taken in for suspected murder. Now it is up to Mrs. De Winter to get Maxime out of the situation. She races her way to the doctor in London and retrieves Rebecca's file, which is under Danvers' last name. At that moment, the lawyer and the doctor enter the room to inquire about the very same thing. Mrs. De Winter hides from them as she browses through the file. However, she finds something there, and this convinces her that it wouldn't matter even if she gets caught. She joins the lawyer and the doctor of her own free will, and together, they see that the file indicates that she had late-stage ovarian cancer. Rebecca only had a few weeks to live and the pain would soon become unbearable. This only proved that Rebecca may have had motive to kill herself. With that new bit of information, Maxime was now in the clear. He was released from holding and was reunited with his wife. The couple enters their car to come home to Manderley, and Maxime tells her that the one thing he regrets the most is that Rebecca changed his wife and that she had lost her youthful, innocent smile. On their way back to the estate, they find that the entire mansion is up in flames. 
Maxime joins the panicked servants and asks them if anyone is still inside the house. Meanwhile, Mrs. De Winter sees Clarice, who tells her that Mrs. Danvers started the fire and that she retreated to the boathouse. Mrs. De Winter comes to the beach, where she sees Danvers at a cliff's edge. She tries to convince Danvers not to jump. Unmoved, Danvers warns the woman that she will never be happy. It's almost like a curse, a foreboding promise of misery. But Mrs. De Winter is unfazed by this. She is confident that she and Maxime will be happy. Months later, Mrs. De Winter wakes up from a nightmare, still haunted by the horrors she went through in Manderley. Despite this, she resolves to leave the past behind and takes joy in the fact that from the flames of Manderley, she was able to save the one thing that mattered to her the most, love. She narrates that she and Maxime are momentarily staying in Cairo in search of finding a new home together. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.